Hey, what's up everybody? Spencer here from the band Drager and today we're going to talk about my favorite subject of all time and that is synthesizers. So my favorite synth, my favorite synth. Wow, what a declaration I'm gonna I'm gonna drop in this video. Um, but I have to give it up to the Pro Three. Now I had a buddy before I you know had a chance to play this. He had early access and he you know talked my ear off. He said there were three filters. You know we had the you know the Oberheim filter. We have a ladder filter and the famous Prophet Six filter. And I was like, wow, that sounds really cool actually. Um, but it wasn't obviously until I got to Nam and I did this. You know, that visceral reaction comes into you, it, it hits your brain, credit cards come flying out of your wallet, and before you know it, you're taking home something that you love. And I absolutely love this synth. Um, but it's not because of the sound, it's actually because of the versatility. This thing has sparked so many different ideas. It's made me more rhythmic, much more dynamic in my bass lines, and there's just so much production value and it gets you to think outside the box, but it's a paraphonic synth, it's a mono synth, like does, that just breeds limitation, right? But really this thing is the center of innovation in my studio. Um, so today I wanna talk about the step sequencer. And you know, sometimes people are a little standoffish about step sequencers, oh they're too rigid, it's the drum machine with no soul, but come on baby, this thing is nothing but soul. It has breathed so much life into my music and so today I really want to show you how you can take simple bass lines and really bring them to life and also how this thing can really kind of change uh, your like just get you to think outside the box and try things that you wouldn't normally think about and just really enhance your production so let's get into it all right so I'm just gonna create a sequence to get this party started on the fly so here we go Let's hear that sounds. And... All right, so let's make it more fun. We're just gonna add a couple ties in here. And... Cool, I'm gonna save that. So we have our sequence now, and now I want to modulate it, add some life to it, and make it sound sexy. And none other than tune feedback. I mean, wow, this thing is a beast. So it's a bass line, so it's perfect. So here we go, all you do is hit that. Now it is a sign, and I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle of the sequence. And one, two, three. But let's juice it up even more. Let's add another one. Let me show you how easy it is. We're gonna add some delay on the same part where the tune feedback, or at the end of the sequence, just to, you know, have a cool tail. And. So, you know, there's motion to this. You know, it's fun, it's, it's danceable. I didn't change any notes. I didn't, you know, even really change the rhythm. I just changed the modulation, you know, and that just brings life to it. All right, so that is simple reason why I use this. Now I wanna show you a couple of tricks that have really altered my songwriting and things that have just flipped the script on production. And that is, uh, I, I'd say there's so many things, but sequence locking was huge for me. I've never seen this in another synth, and maybe you could crucify me in the comments um, if I'm wrong, but I, I've just never seen it before, and I think this was such a simple feature that can change everything about your workflow. It's just taking the modulation and the notation of the sequence and applying it to different patches without thinking about it. You just scroll through it. Let's try this. So maybe you start the song with this, you know? Again, there was no thinking. There was just getting lost in it. I was just experimenting. This sequence lock just saved my sequence. So it's a huge help for evolving bass lines and you know, layering things and just adding more character to my song, more depth, without you know, adding chords and new instruments. I'm just reinforcing stuff that's already there. It's huge. 
All right guys, so I wanna show you another little bonus trick, something that uh, wasn't as obvious to me. Um, and that is taking a, you know, like let's say a bass line and, and instead of it being monophonic, switching to paraphonic, you know, usually paraphonic can be used for simple chords, but in this instance, it really adds a lot of counter melodies and things that, again, you wouldn't think about, so. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope some of these tips were actually practical and useful and something that you can apply in songwriting. Maybe it'll help you finish some of those songs that have just been, you know, on a, on a hard drive somewhere or just, you know, trying something new and maybe dusting off the step sequencer on your synth and giving it a whirl. Um, thank you, Dave Smith, for having me. And again, my name is Drager. Bye, guys. You're cutting your teeth.